Welcome back to Joe Stunner Boxing. Let's talk about a great trilogy fight that happened this weekend. No, I am not talking about Fury Chisora 3. The fight I'm thinking of was not a cynical cash grab. It was a genuine legacy fight. A brilliant matchup between two magnificent warriors. Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez and Juan Francisco Estrada. It was won on a majority decision by Estrada. Um, I had Estrada win in uh, 115-113. You could make it, certainly make a case for a draw. One of the judges did have it a draw, but what a brilliant fight between two absolute living legends. Um, I picked Chocolatito to win, you know, all year long. 2022 has been a disaster for predictions for me personally. I don't know about you, but I got this one wrong. But, you know, come on, man. Who cares? I mean, it was this was an incredible fight. It was shown on DAZN. If you ain't got that DAZN app, I know they're charging, what is it, eight quid. Eight quid a month is a bargain. All right. It started off at two, two quid, didn't it, a couple of years ago. Now it's eight quid. You're missing out on so much brilliant boxing because this was not a fight for any casual. This is for someone that loves boxing. Actually, it is a fight for the casual because if a casual fan watched this, they'd be like, whoa, what a brilliant fight. It was magnificent. It was absolutely magnificent. And I did a preview for it. Where, again, I predicted that Chocolatito would edge it on points as it happens. Estrada got it on points. But 115, 113. I, I'm someone who thought Estrada lost the previous two fights, but I had him winning this one. So, But he's 2-1 in the series. Does it matter? I mean, it's this is these are two guys who are who will go down in history as just you know brilliant fighters of their era. Um, look, they fought everyone. Both they're both multiweight champs. Um, Chocolatito is one of my favourite fighters of, of my entire lifetime. I love him. Magnificent in everything he does. He never does anything badly. Um, his poise, his the way he keeps his shape, the way he puts mental as well as physical pressure on, a, on an opponent by firing punches at the correct time when they least expect it controlling the range Estrada more of a probably more of a not a slug is completely the wrong word but a, more of a pressure fighter um has exemplary skills himself um but probably more more of a um I'm almost tempted to say a less crafty fighter, more of a slightly more predictable than Chocolatito, perhaps, but nevertheless a high ring IQ. But weirdly, when this fight started, it was Estrada who came out of the gate quickest. And that's not to say that Chocolatito, who, who can start very slowly, that's not to say he wasn't on it, he was, but he was a step behind for at least the first five rounds, six rounds. Um, Estrada controlled the reins beautifully and had perfect tactics. He moved a lot, wasn't stationary. Just moved, he moved, but only when it was on the periphery of the range. So he was able to catch anything that Chocolatito was trying to do. He himself, Estrada, was being in industrious. He was firing punches first. He was being the first to the punch. Definitely quicker trigger on Estrada in this fight. Chocolatito, when he was looking to counter was missing. Estrada was able to counter Chocolatito better. Um, kept him on the end, end of the jab, but was firing combinations. I know these are smaller guys. This was for the for what it's worth. This was for the, what was it, for Ring Magazine, Super Flyweight title. Um, it doesn't matter about the belts. It really doesn't. But smaller guys tend to throw more punches. Um, and that, of course, proved to be the case with this with this fight, but it, it, for the first half of the fight, it was definitely Estrada who was the sharper, the busier puncher. And Chocolatito, I mean, how good do you have to be to put Chocolatito in a position where he's struggling with the range? The guy's a, a fistic genius, but Estrada was doing it. Chocolatito just couldn't quite manage the range. He was a step behind. He was, he was a, a that hair trigger fraction of a second behind. And after six rounds, I think I had it 5-1 to Estrada. Um, and I was like, what the hell's going on here? You know, but Chocolatito, like all great fighters, made those adjustments, adapted. And in the second half of the fight, he was in in danger. That's the wrong phrase, isn't it? He was um, threatening to play catch up, to catch up Estrada. And some of the, finally, he was able to get in range himself, to control range better himself, get in range and then fire those crafty punches. 
body and head, head to body, both hands. Where was the next punch coming from? Estrada's thinking. Estrada still working, still letting his hands go. Um, still catching Chocolatito, but not with the frequency of the first six rounds, the first five or six rounds. In the second half of the fight, it was Chocolatito who was able to get up close, cut the ring off far better. than He wasn't cutting the ring off successfully in the first half of the fight at all. In the second half of the fight, he was, possibly because Estrada was, had used up a lot of energy, he would slow down a little bit. Maybe, oh, um, did he take, the, take his foot off the gas? I doubt it very much. But as, whatever the case was, Chocolatito was able to get close, cut that ring off and land those, those punches. Good combinations. Punch picking, as always, was perfect from Chocolatito in the second half of the fight. Um, but El Gallo, the rooster, as Estrada calls himself, still firing punches, still keeping Chocolatito with plenty to think of. You know, he wasn't rolling over as if we ever thought he would. He was still firing a lot of punches. There was just a little bit more desperation and a little bit less thought going into it. I'm not saying they would don't hit me punches, but Estrada seemed to have maybe lost just a fraction of the momentum he had. And whereas Chocolatito in the second half of the fight was edging forward, edging forward, both mentally, obviously physically, um, psychologically, he seemed to have found his groove in the second half of the fight. And Estrada, as good as he was, I, I gave most of the rounds. I can't, I scored it live when I was watching it. I can't remember exactly which rounds I gave. But Chocolatito narrowing that gap, narrowing, narrowing, narrowing. If this was an old 15 rounder, one of the old school 15 rounders, I would have probably thought, I would think, yeah, Chocolatito's going to win this, edge it. But it's only a 12 rounder, of course. And I had a 115, 113 scorecard for El Gallo, Estrada. Hung on almost implies that he was desperate. He wasn't desperate. He was still firing some, you know, some successful volleys, just not as many as in the first fight. And Chocolatito was bringing it, as they say. I mean, you know, what a great couple of fighters these are. And I just thought El Gallo hung on enough in the second half of that fight. Work rate was still, was good throughout the whole fight from El Gallo. Estrada, great work rate. That probably edged it. It probably was the work rate. Maybe he outworked Chocolatito over 12, over the, the entire duration of the 36 minutes. Because early on, Chocolatito not really, his work rate wasn't good. You know, he was he was more pot shot in and, and he was getting countered. So, yeah, again, 115, 113 for me. One of the judges had it a draw. Two of the others had it um, for Estrada. No argument with the decision. Would you like a fourth helping of this brilliant matchup? Why not? It's got to happen quick, though, because I think it's Chocolatito, 35, 36 now, mid-30s, certainly. Um, and probably we need it sooner rather than later. Chocolatito probably passed his best, but not by much. Don't, you know, don't get me wrong. This guy beats almost everyone out there. Um, Bam Rodriguez against Chocolatito or, or Estrada. How about that? Not bad, is it? Bam didn't look great in his last fight, but still an immense talent. Um, and he, I think he was on the DAZN uh, panel. You know, there was Chris Mannix. I believe Chris Mannix had, I don't know whether he had it a draw or whether he had Chocolatito edging it. I don't know. I, I, I was scoring my own scorecard. I wasn't really paying attention to a lot of the, how the commentary guys were doing it, but um, Sergio Mora, I think, was on the panel and uh, on the commentary team, and he was. I think he thought he thought El Gallo had edged it, but it was one of those fights. You, it's a pick and fight, you know. Have a look at it. Have a look at it. It's on the zone. If you ain't got the zone, try and see it another way. If you take my meaning, but this is you know with the, the stench of Fury Chisora three that crap card. The whole damn card was useless. So, mind you that. The uh, Daniel Dubois fight was a bit of fun because it was so bizarre. But, um, you know, a cynical cash grab, you know, at the expense of watching Derek Chisora getting smashed to bits, beaten up. It's uh, it ugly watching it. You can have that, you know. If you if that's your idea of boxing entertainment, maybe this ain't the channel for you. I'm not get kicking you out the door, I'm just saying. Because real boxing, to me, my love of boxing comes from when you get two elite fighters matching up. 
and I don't care where they're big names. I don't care where they're small guys. It's relevant to me. They can be two. They can be two area level guys. Actually, if they're well matched up, they produce a good fight. There's entertainment there. What I don't want to watch is some bells and whistles, cynical cash grab, where it's simply a case of, you know, a showcase for one guy, but it's it's promoted as being some sort of meaningful fight, some sort of world title fight. It's garbage. This was a real world title fight. This was a real trilogy legacy fight. Brilliant, brilliant match between two elite guys. Did you see it? If so, leave your comments below. Leave in comments below. If you like the channel, subscribe. Thank you if, you, if you've already subscribed. If you like the video, hit the like button. You can help out the channel. Just It's all free. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. Job done. I appreciate it. I, really, I always appreciate your time. Whether we agree or not, I appreciate your time. Leave your comments below. I always like reading them as well. So well done to uh, Juan Francisco Elgayo Estrada. He goes 2-1 against uh, the brilliant um, Roman Chocolatito Gonzalez. Are they going to have a fourth fight? I wouldn't say no. Go on, lads. Do it again. Do it again. Thanks for your time. We'll speak again soon. I hope you enjoy the rest of your weekend. Come on. Hey, enjoy it. It's Monday tomorrow. Work and all that. We don't want that. Enjoy it now. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.